Now our next presenter is the program administrator for the Washington State Department of Transportation. Please welcome Ron Punanen. Transportation is vital to Seattle and all cities, yet our aging, aging infrastructure threatens the safety, reliability, and valuable sustainability of this valuable asset for our current and future generations. And Seattle's Alaskan Way Viaduct project is one such transportation project. Construction of the original viaduct began in the 1950s, and it has gone through many renovations over time. The viaduct is now a critical north-south artery that runs through the heart of downtown Seattle and carries 110,000 vehicles a day, about a quarter of all north-south traffic through Seattle. The Alaskan Way Viaduct, more specifically, is a double-deck, two-mile roadway that is part of State Route 99. It serves many different transportation facilities, including I-5, I-90, a major ferry and shipping terminal. It supports the greater regional transportation system, plus the downtown business core and tourism business, including the Seattle Aquarium, two major sports stadiums <clears throat> featuring football, soccer, baseball, rock concerts, and more. <clears throat> but when the, when the 6.8 magnitude Nisqually earthquake hit the city in 2001, it damaged the viaduct, causing it to settle into the weak fill soil underneath. The adjacent seawall which holds this soil in place is also deteriorating <clears throat> due to age and the corrosive marine environment and was damaged in the earthquake. Post-earthquake inspections uncovered structural damage to the viaduct's joints and columns. WashDOT subsequently determined that instead of retrofitting the viaduct, it needed to be replaced or rebuilt. This simulation shows, shows us what could happen in the event of another similar earthquake. We initiated an environmental and design process right away. This required analysis of multiple options for the viaduct, seawall, and major utilities. Safety was our biggest concern, avoiding a situation where something that you saw could, could happen in the future. The state is responsible for the $3.1 billion viaduct replacement. The larger $4.2 billion program has been broken down into different sub-projects led by the state City of Seattle, and King County. The state began major construction for half of the viaduct replacement this past summer, replacing the southern mile of the viaduct with a side-by-side -side roadway that meets modern earthquake and safety standards. Design was key from the very start, and we needed a way to communicate complex design information in a way that people could understand. So we took the data, paper in some cases, as well as CAD and geospatial information, and we built models. We looked at more than 90 different replacement options overall. We looked at replacing the entire viaduct along the waterfront, putting it underground in a tunnel, and even looked at a bridge over Elliott Bay. We considered the entire system of streets, transit service, bicycles, pedestrians, and freeways within a large area with an emphasis on safety, mobility, sustainability, to keep people moving, people and goods moving, uh, not during construction and after the project was complete. We created accurate visual and virtual models that enabled us to literally see into the future, to understand the project from any point of view, to make more informed decisions with multiple stakeholders. We also use this approach to evaluate design alternatives and traffic impacts, study construction sequencing and closures, analyze lighting and shadows, and support a public outreach and communication effort that proved successful in helping the public understand the process and help gain uh, support for the project. In 2008, we convened a 30-member stakeholder advisory committee to help the agencies analyze replacement alternatives. The visualizations produced from this model-based process helped us truly see and communicate what things would look like and how they would work. This helped focus discussions and narrow down to a selected alternative. In 2009, the governor, King County executive, Seattle mayor, and Port of Seattle CEO recommended replacing the viaduct's central waterfront section with a board tunnel under downtown Seattle. This would also include surface street and transit investments, plus downtown and waterfront improvements. This option would minimize construction disruption, improve safety, 
reconnect neighborhoods, and allow the city to realize their vision for the downtown waterfront and local economy. We have been proceeding with preliminary design and environmental review of the board tunnel alternative, which will be approximately 55 feet in diameter, the largest of its kind in the world. There will be space for utilities and safe refuge should there be a major incident or accident in the tunnel. For this, we used as built to determine where existing infrastructure is located underground, including sewer lines, building foundations, and a railroad tunnel. Designing a project of this magnitude requires contribution, collaboration, accuracy, and accountability. We engaged early and often throughout the process using models to improve communication and decision making amongst multiple parties. <clears throat> Building information modeling tools and visualizations contributed greatly to the planning and design process. They helped identify conflicts and optimization early on. They improved internal and external communication, and as I stated earlier, this really helped everyone see what is possible. And because these models are built from the ground up on engineering data, we have more confidence in what we are looking at and how we can accomplish our goals together. And with the success we've had on the Alaska Way Viaduct, we are now using this approach on other transportation infrastructure projects in the region. The $4.5 billion SR520 project, for example, involves over six miles of roadway, including the world's longest floating bridge, bus and HOV lanes with direct access ramps, coordinated with light rail, new open space, noise walls, landscaping, lids, and other amenities. Like the viaduct, these models help the public see not just the completed project, but how it will be built. We see this as a better way to work, to literally see into the future to understand the complex role of transportation within our cities, communities, and economies. By designing, constructing, and simulating in the computer first, we have less risk and greater predictability in the real world. We improve collaboration and communication. We can see issues more clearly and find ways to solve them. And in the end, we gain more confidence in the decisions we make. Those decisions that will have a lasting impact on the safety, mobility, and sustainability for future generations. Thank you for having me here today.